Hi. Uh, so you probably just heard the Click to Learn More intro Hi. music. Oh, uh, sorry. I was... No, I was talking to you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so if you're hearing this, uh, if you've if you've listened to episode 36, uh, which was the part one to this part two, uh, you'll know that sorry. we talked for a while <laughs> uh, about murder and stuff. And so we, yeah. we thought it was in your best interest for longevity's sake or for mm-hmm. uh, endurance sake and our best interest just because we don't want a two-hour episode on our podcast feed, uh, to cut it into two. So this is the second part of Liddy's murder conversation. Yeah, y'all, it's real hard to talk about murder for two hours, but it's exceptionally hard to listen for two hours <laughs> about murder. So uh, we thought it would be, like Dorm said, in our best interest and in your best interest to cut it uh, to where it wasn't so dense and heavy and all about murder and death. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, Dorm's episode. Oh, yeah, that's definitely been written already. It's been written and uh, already done, and we loved it, and it was real good. And I definitely know what it's about. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, en- enjoy this episode, future y'all. Yeah, present. Present you? Well, would you say to that? us right now, it's future them. Yeah, to us, it's future, but... But cur- I guess when you're listening to it, it's for you, present. It's present, you. and we will be past people at this so point. So, from history's famed, farts in their wind... From, from history's famed podcast explainers... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lorm and you're Diddy. Why am I Diddy? That's our alt- I said I'm Lorm. Lorm. That's our alternate universe names. But, but I'm not Diddy. I can't even rap. Enjoy this episode. <laughs> Thank you guys. We love you. Goodbye. Are Goodbye. We- no, no, don't go. I was like, why are you outroing the <laughs> don't intro? Don't go. Come back. It's just starting. That's why I said enjoy the episode. <laughs> it's just- I had a plan. <laughs> it's just starting. Come back. Enjoy the murder. Which brings us to our next section. Uh huh. Multiple murderers are people who have killed more than one victim. So we've talked about the types of killing there can be, like first-degree murder, homicide, manslaughter. Now we're going to talk about the type of people that do these murders. Okay. Based on the patterns of their murders, multiple killers are classified into three basic categories. Mass murderers, spree killers, and serial killers. Now, rampage killers is a relatively new name that's given to both mass murderers and spree killers, so it's kind of been, like, used back and forth. You'll hear rampage killers used more in the news than you will spree killers now. Yeah, because um, spree is a candy. Well, and also, like, spree... Spree sounds fast, and mm. sometimes it can't. it's not quite fast, and rampage is what it is. It's just killing to kill. Like, there's no rhyme or reason behind it. It's just yeah, killing to like kill. Yeah, like video game that... And then was turned into a movie. Was it called Rampage? The video game with like the uh, girl oh, and stuff that The Rock was what, in the movie. What was of? the one that got all that got in all that trouble because there was a guy that would like run around and kill a bunch of people, and it was like the most violent video game of our time or something like that. Manhunt, the was Rockstar that, game. Is that what it was? I remember it was like that one was really brutal. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. A and lot you, like, of people cut people's heads off. And yeah, stuff. maybe that's it. A lot of people were like, "This is the most violent video game that's ever going to be." Yeah, out. that was the one that got banned in like so many countries or whatever. Yeah, and then they they were like, "There's never going to be a worse game than this." And then you play games now where your entire body explodes and your limbs just lay there in a pile of mush. And it's like, <laughs> oh, if only they could have seen. Yeah, it's cute. <laughs> Not to imply that violent video games make people violent. I love violent video games, and I love violence, uh, and I... <laughs> You're not defending it? Well, no, I was going to say... Not violent video games are no, violent, but I, I do love violent video but, games, but I've boy, never, I love violence. I've never once wanted to kill somebody, though. Mm. Like, I've never once gone... You never know, once? No. I've Not actually. Like, I've just... <laughs> I know, I'm I've, joking. I've thought... I've looked at a person and thought, I'd pinch your head off if I could. <laughs> yeah. But there's never been a time where I, I've, like... I squished your head. <laughs> I squished your head. It's like kids in the hall reference, Jesus. But there's never been a time that it's been... It's... Was it, violent video games don't make people violent. It's the end of the story. Oh okay. God, was it kids in the hall or why does kids you know? Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Mass murder is the act of murdering a number of people, typically simultaneously or over a relatively short period of time, and in close geographic proximity. The FBI defines mass murder as murdering four or more persons during an event with no, quote, cooling off period between the murders. This damn cooling off period. I know. Yeah. A mass murder typically occurs in a single location where one or more people kill several others. So, but the first thing that comes to mind, school shootings. Yeah, I thought of, so of, I thought of the Las Vegas so that's, shooter. That's, yeah, so that's going to be that's going to be Columbine. That's going to be any any number of these things where you have a lot of people in one place, sure. and typically one person doing the the most damage. One mm. person, one person's normally doing it. It's it's rare to find multiples. Um, 
So how such rarely occurring incidents or homicide are classified tends to change significantly with time. So, for instance, in the 1960s and 70s, it was understood that the key feature of a number of such cases was a high body count. These early discussions of mass murder lumped together a variety of cases that varied along with what would come to be seen as important dimensions. So that they considered, like, time. For instance, did the killing occur more or less simultaneously, or did they extend over several days, months, or years? Sure. The place, did the killings occur in a single location or in a variety of places? And method, how were they killed? So these things come into play to determine if it's going to be considered a mass murder, or if it's going to be a spree or rampage killing, or if it's going to be a serial killing. So these these items come into play there. Yeah. Um, in the late decades of the 20th century and early years of the 2000s, the most popular classifications move to include method, time, and place. So normally mm. it was how they do it, when did they do it, where did they do it. So that's that's normally how that goes. So examples of mass murders are Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh was a Gulf War veteran and an American domestic terrorist who perpetrated the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing, ah, okay. um, which killed 168 people and injured over 680 others. The bombing was the deadliest act of terrorism within the United States prior to September 11th and remains the deadliest act of terrorism, domestic terrorism, in the United States. And I feel like it's important to say this. Uh, he was executed by lethal injection on June 11, 2001. Mm. If I'm going to tell you about these people, I'm also going to tell you how they died. Now, I because this was... What year was it? I'm sorry. 95. Okay, so I was... Oh. I, I was a babe. You were... You were uh, zygoped. Yeah. I... Is this the Unabomber? No. Okay. No. These... I've always thought the Unabomber did Oklahoma City bombings, but I couldn't remember if that was No. Right so the Unabomber is different from Timothy McVeigh. He okay. has he has his own dang name. Um, another mass shooter, mass murderer. And, and so that's what's different, I guess. Timothy McVeigh used bombs to do mm. his damage. Uh, so Timothy McVeigh was kind of in with a little bit with the Branch Davidians, David Koresh. And their okay. whole thing in gotcha. Waco. He, he They're kind called of, the Davidians? Branch Davidians, yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah, I've he, heard of David Crash, but I've never heard him called that. Yeah, Davidians. David Crash, yeah. That's yeah. the whole thing. He really liked himself. God. Um, but Timothy McVeigh, like... I thought he was. Liked, or kind of like believed in the same things they believed and didn't mm. ap- agree with how it went down at Waco. So he, this was his like, I'm going to fight back kind of thing. Weird. So he loaded up a truck with a ton of explosives in it and like left it parked. Um, and it, I can't remember where the building was. Like the end of Fight Club? <laughs> kind of. Like okay. left it and exploded it. And it actually, there, there's a lot of really iconic and terrible imagery from that time where there's like firefighters holding children because it was right near, uh, there was a, um, a daycare that was part of mm. what had been exploded. And so, like, I remember, like, on the cover of, like, Time and, like, all of these things where they were talking about this, there were, like, firemen holding, like, we just see, like, little little children that they're holding that have have, have died. And, yeah, Timothy McVeigh um, was executed by lethal injection, uh, which was not good enough for him, um, on June 11, 2001. So he, it, I think, I, re- I remember reading that it was, like, one of the, fastest ways to get from like he was the one of the fastest ones to get from death row to being at because like a lot of people sit on death row for sure. years yeah, like, he was made priority like people will die on death row of old age before yeah. they come up to be put to death so like the fact that he got bumped up to the front meant you know they sure. they i mean people were calling for his head as soon as it happened oh, the most hated man in america for a while oh yeah um so we've also got uh adam lanza and adam lanza was a 20-year-old mentally disturbed man who fatally shot his mother before driving to Sandy Hook Elementary School, where he then killed 20 children between 6 and 7 years old, as well as 6 adult staff members. He then killed himself as he heard the police arrive because he was a coward. The incident was the deadliest mass shooting at either a high school or grade school in U.S. history, and the fourth deadliest mass shooting by a single person in U.S. history. Where do you fall on the we-should-say-their-name-we-shouldn't-say-their-name argument? I feel like knowing their name is fine glorifying their name is different so like the reason i'm talking about them now is because i feel like it's a cautionary tale more than a like Mm. look at his death count or look at this this is more along the lines of like this terrible thing that they did here are the names that are associated with these terrible things sure i don't i don't like when they when they're on the news talking about them Mm. and they just like, who was it? And let's find their pictures and let's find their faces and let's talk about their lives. And who were they? Because 
I, I feel like if you're going to talk about them, talk about them five years from then or talk yeah. about them, you know, like... I'm fine with it posthumously. Yeah. Talk about it down the road. But I don't want them to be talked about in any positive... Like, because, I mean, copycat killings happen all the time. And when people see that, like, there were a couple people... Um, oh, what was his name? One guy... I might have... I thought I might have had him in here. Um, but one guy just, like lived on the fact that he was going to be famous for for killing people Mm. like he knew that and i mean even the columbine shooters like they were like we're going down in history like Mm. they knew that they were going to be they were going to be known yeah they knew their names were going to be known um but i didn't say their names um but they you know i don't know them so (laughs) well it's it's a very (laughs) fine line there between um talking about them in a way that's supposed to be educational and speaking about them in a way that's like kind of how many points they racked up, right. you know, like, yeah, no, I thought you were navigating that really smartly. And that's why I wanted to ask you the question. And I also like talking about how they died. Cause it's important that people <laughs> know that, um, that they are dead. Right. Um, and if there's any justice in the world, hopefully they're burning somewhere. Mm. Um, Richard. I, and I also brought it up cause Adam Lanz is the first name I recognize. Yeah. So like I actually know that name. And, and I chose that one specifically. There were a few that, that were on this list of like spree killers and i chose his specifically because it was so devastating Mm. and because there was so much controversy surrounding it where people thought that there were crisis actors oh god like what's the alex jones thing yeah which by the way uh sandy hook parents have won the case i think so yeah Yeah. they yeah they they ended up taking him to court and saying like they have access to like all of his records now yeah and Um, he acted uh directly in opposition to factual evidence he had saying that mm-hmm. it did happen mm-hmm. uh, and the investigations that his teams had done and he acted yeah. against it and therefore that was a uh, 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 libel or whichever one of those yeah slander, slander libel yeah one of L- them libel's printed. printed and slander's <laughs> spoken so you're right yeah. it's slander I can never um, remember I get the two confused all the time or maybe it's the other way around but yeah it's one, one or the other but yeah I defamation of character yeah um, the but fact the, suit. the fact that anybody could say oh that's a crisis actor their kid didn't actually die that is yeah. boggling mind boggling to me like yeah. i don't understand how that's even a thing um but you know luckily i don't think that way um so richard speck was an american mass murderer who systematically tortured raped and murdered eight student nurses from south chicago community hospital on the night of july 13th into the early morning hours of july 14th 1966 he was convicted at trial and sentenced to death but the sentence was later overturned due to issues with jury selection in his trial and he died of a heart attack after 25 years in prison. So he lived in prison for 25 years and then had a heart, heart attack and died. Do you remember me asking you about who is the serial killer that, like, killed a bunch of college girls? So Bundy also did that. That's who I was thinking oh, of. Oh, okay. That just hit. Okay. Because he, I remember hearing about, like, how he snuck into, like, because they all lived together. Mm-hmm. And I remember how, like, hearing how he snuck into the, whatever it was, like, not an apartment, but like a, mm-hmm. a home or a house. Now you're sure it's not Bundy because he did that too. But Bundy did it over a period of time, right? Well, Bundy Bundy killed uh, in one house over one night. Oh, really? He snuck into oh, a. Oh, well, maybe it is Bundy. He snuck. He snuck into a. Um, that sounded right, but maybe it is Bundy. Into, into a sorority house. Mm, and it might have actually been Bundy then. Sorry. And I think My he bad. bludgeoned a woman with a log or something, or like <laughs> hit a woman with a log. Um, but I mean, it very well could have been Richard Speck. There's there's a couple. There are some quote unquote interesting details about each of these people that i'm mm. leaving out specifically because these are not episodes about them these are episodes right. about what type of murderer they were um so you know i may always i may come back and touch a little differently on sure. on who they were and leave like the door that. open yeah but you don't need to know that about them they don't matter all that matters is they were monsters and this is how they killed people mm. um so we're to our uh to our last one uh, which is, or no, we'll talk about spree killers. Let's talk about spree killers first, actually, and we'll save serial killers for last. Um, spree killers, sometimes referred to as rampage killers, murder two or more victims, but at more than one location. Although the murders occur in separate locations, their spree is considered a single event because there's no cooling off period yeah. uh, between the murders, and the lack of a cooling off period marks the difference between that and a serial killer. But this category has however been found to be of no real value to law enforcement because of definitional problems relating to the concept of a cooling off period which is what you were talking about hey. like how do we determine what is 20 minutes a cooling off period is yeah. two days a cooling off period there's no way to know you know what i'm thinking of when you say spree killer what the last scene or not the last scene but the one of the last scenes of american psycho Ooh. when he's like walking around 
and he just like shoots the dude in the hotel Mm -hmm. he tries to feed the cat to the atm yeah and like he just he's just killing everybody yeah like that's what i'm imagining is a spree killer killer? everything i reference is just movies i guess (laughs) because i don't know real stories that's actually fine because we're gonna talk about somebody that in basically kind of inspired to film and you'll know it when you hear it Okay. Um, differentiating between mass murderers, spree killers, and serial killers is the source for ongoing debates among criminologists. And while many experts agree that the general description of a spree killer, or about the general description of a spree killer, the term's often dropped and mass or serial killers used in its place. So, like, mm. rampage slash shla- blah, 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 rampage slash spree killers um, can also be lumped into a mass murderer. It's- yeah, I was, I was going to ask, and I, I don't mean to say a sound obtuse, um, but... Do you want to sound acute or equilateral? <laughs> I was hoping you would Shawshank me. Uh, <laughs> obtuse. Was it deliberate? Um, <laughs> but, it, like, why does it matter? <laughs> why does it matter to differentiate? I think... I actually don't know what, okay. the, what the differentiation is. Like, I don't know... Well, well, okay, so some of it's psychological. So some of it is the method and the way in which they kill can show a little bit more towards, like, what they're going to do next. So mass murderers, for the most part, if they're not caught kill themselves like a lot of mass Mm. murderers are either killed by the police okay i see or kill themselves serial killers tend to go for a long time before they're caught right um and then like you've got your spree killers which can last for a little while and then eventually will get caught or you know like normally a mass shooting or something like that happens in a short amount of time sure so it's it's a pretty like within you know a couple hours or something like that a spree can take you know over weeks or months and then serial killers can be active for decades yeah like they can be active forever so i guess it's just a qualific or not a qualification but a classification um so that they're better understood to study them and like their that methods their me- and serial killers tend to have a um a type of killing that they do like they target a specific group of people or a specific looking person or their mo yeah they have an mo there you go modus operandi mm. um <laughs> the latin <laughs> phrase most uttered in film probably <laughs> yeah probably um <laughs> so we're going to talk about a spree killer charles starkweather um <laughs> He was an American spree killer. Sorry, um, that's a funny name. Between December 1957 and January 1958, Starkweather, with his 14-year-old girlfriend by his side, killed 11 people in Nebraska. How old was he? Um, he was fairly young as well. He was like he was in his teens okay. as well. Um, that mattered. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's fair. <laughs> He's a yeah, 14-year-old fair. girlfriend. I was like, is that is that okay? Yeah, was, was he 40? Like, what's yeah. the deal? Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, he was fairly young. He killed 11 people in Nebraska and Wyoming, including including her parents and her two-year-old half-sister. Um, so he claimed... yeah. So he this sounds familiar, too. So he went to her home, and she claimed she wasn't there. He claimed she was there. Um, he came in and was like, I'm going to take her with me. They were like, no, you're not. And he killed both of them, and then her half-sister. And then they stayed in that house. Uh, she yeah. said... Yeah, she said that he kept her kidnapped... He said she went along with it, and mm. and she ended up, you know, pleading out of it and saying, "I'll tell you everything. I'm totally innocent." And he was like, "No, nah, that's not the case." Um, hmm. So he was executed by electrocution 17 months after his conviction. His story inspired several films, including Natural Born Killers. Oh, I've never seen it. Yeah, and that came out in '94. So you were, you know, I know about the film though. Yeah, you're just a. Uh, I just, was. Just. Oh, what do they say? A glimmer in your dad's eye or whatever? just a piece of dust. Yeah. That's what you were. Um, and then there's the DC sniper attacks. Do you remember those? Nope. Um, so the DC sniper attacks were also considered a product of spree killers. Um, they were John Allen Muhammad, aged 41 at the time, and Lee Boyd Malvo, aged 17 at the time. Young boy. They traveled in a blue 1990 Chevrolet Capri sedan, and their crime spree began in February 2002 and included murders and robberies in the states of Alabama, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, and Washington. All, Arizona and Washington are weird. All like over the list. place. All over the place, which resulted in seven deaths and seven wounded people. In 10 months, the snipers killed 17 people and wounded 10 others. In September 2003, Muhammad was sentenced to death, and in October, the adolescent was sentenced to six consecutive life sentences without parole. Holy God, Jesus. you're going to be in prison for literally the rest of your life. Um, in November of 2009, the older the older dude, Muhammad, was put to death by lethal injection. I have a question. Yes. Um, and I kind of probably already know the answer, okay. but I just want to make sure. Uh-huh. What is the point of s- scheduling someone to multiple life sentences? 
Is it just a closure thing? I don't really know. I it for, makes no sense. Yeah, because I mean, because people will say like, what, so, okay, so I've I've seen it happen before where there have been judges that have say that say you will be in jail for the rest of your natural life. I think that it may have something to do with like all of the people they've killed. It's like you get a life sentence for this person and a sure. life sentence for this person. But I don't know like logistically and like what that means because if you get a life sentence that's it right like you would think (laughs) you can't have more than one life you're why not Not just (laughs) because i mean i've heard them say before like oh you're sentenced to 300 years in jail like i've heard that happen that's weird too yeah so i don't understand like i don't know if that means you can't there's like some way they do it so that you can't be eligible for parole and you can't play Mm. out of it like I don't, like, can't you just say, you know, you're sentenced to life with no eligibility right. for parole? Um, because they can't really bring the case back up because it's already been judged. Sure. It's already been judged. Adjudicated. Uh, yeah, so you can't really bring it back up and, and revisit it. So I, I don't know. I'm not, okay. I'm not sure. Part of me thinks it's, like, I would just be like, cool, 500 years in prison. See ya. You yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. I would just want to be, like, over the top. Like, sure. you don't well, just get I assumed it. it's for, you know, if someone kills six people, you get six life sentences. Right, yeah. For those families so they yeah. each feel like they've gotten True, there. yeah. But I don't understand. Like, if I were one of those family members, it's impossible to put your place, put yourself in that place. But yeah. I would imagine that hearing they have life in prison versus they have six life sentences would feel about the same. Yeah. Um, so I don't know exactly why they do it. Yeah, I mean, the, the equivalent of saying you have 600 years in jail... And you have six life sentences, like, like a Tolkien I, novel. Yeah, like. I don't, I don't know if that's that's something I need to look up actually, because that's that's a really good question that I don't have an answer for. We'll okay. look it up after the podcast. All right. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about serial killers. It's the last topic that I have to talk about, and I saved it because it's the one that I know the most about. <laughs> I was going to say, here we go for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the one that I know the most about. Um, serial killers murder three or more victims, like Count Chocula. <laughs> exactly. I got to lighten it up. But each victim is killed on separate occasions. So unlike mass murderers and spree killers, serial killers usually select their victims, have cooling off periods between murders, and plan their crimes carefully. So serial killers will go out and say, that's the person I'm going to kill. They'll watch them for a little bit. Right. And then that like this is the most premeditated a murder can get. Like yeah. they have it planned in their minds. That's the person they're going to kill. So they go and do it. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, could you be, not to keep all the, I have this point. Oh no. Could you be a, a crime of passion serial killer? No. Really? I don't think you could. Okay. Because I think serial implies that you're doing it over and over and over and over again. Couldn't so. theoretically you be in crime of passion theoretically? <laughs> I think you have, I think. <laughs> I have a big problem with the term crime of passion, I guess. I don't know. I, I feel like you would at some point have to turn yourself in <laughs> you know like a crime yeah, of passion implies that that you come back to your senses and realize that what you've done is wrong oh i didn't know that part yeah so crime of passion is just like it only happened because you lost yourself like you were so out right. of control <laughs> right you were so out of control yeah no it makes sense i'm just and still so thinking be, about the scenario in which so being able to come in someone just, just oh not again yeah uh, well like okay here's the scenario <laughs> you're gonna this podcast episode three hours long so I'm just going to keep the same example we had earlier. Guy walks in on an mm-hmm. affair, okay. right? Kills both of them, we'll say. Okay. Somehow doesn't get caught. Okay. Right? Goes to the grocery store. They don't have his favorite cereal. Kills the closest living man. <laughs> no. That's oh, why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> Years later. <laughs> he's dating someone else. Okay. Walks in on an affair. Kills uh-huh. both of them. Uh-huh. Years later. <laughs> it just keeps happening? Yeah. Wouldn't he be a crime of passion serial killer? No, I don't think so. Because I feel like after the third time you kill somebody, like, you're going to get caught. Well, I don't know. Imagine he does it. I don't know. <laughs> Play just, with me. Um, imagine he doesn't. Play with me. Imagine he doesn't get caught. This is my favorite topic and you're bumming me out. <laughs> I'm bumming you out. You talked about murder for an hour. That was the joke. Oh. That was the goof I did. Gotcha. Well, Sniped ya. Well, that was poor choice words. <laughs> it was an Elise Willems thing. I didn't mean it to be. <laughs> you a, just talked about the DC sniper. I, I didn't mean it to be a murder thing. It was supposed to be a reference to Funhouse's <laughs> content. And now I've forever sullied it. Yeah. Like All right. The pilot. All right. <laughs> Serial killers. What did you say? I've lost him. <laughs> I'm going insane. 
<laughs> you, said, you said he sullied it, and I said, like, the pilot. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to get through this. Some serial killers travel widely to find their victims, Ugh. such as Ted Bundy, which we talked about, but others remain in the same general geographic area. These are most likely the guys you've heard more about. These are the lazy guys. These, Well, these are the guys you've heard more about because they're, stat- like, serial killers. Um, because their status in society catapults them into a kind of a cult following. So these are the guys you most likely have heard the most about. So off the top of my head, we're going to be like serial killers are well. <laughs> like Edmund Kemper and Ed Gein, who's technically considered a serial killer, but isn't really a serial killer. Um, then you've got, of course, Dahmer and Ted Bundy and Richard Ramirez. You've got all of these guys that BTK, Dennis Rader. Um, who was the guy that had the really creepy interview that you showed me? Who like was very like Edmund Kemper. Yeah. We'll talk about him. Uh, you got Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer. Like, you've got, you got all these dudes. You want to know the funny thing? What? You could make something up and I'd believe you. <laughs> like, oh, you got the Blue Farce Killer. <laughs> How do you know that I didn't just make all those guys up? You don't know. Oh, no. Oh, no. <gasps> it was me all along. It's all simulation. It was me. Austin. I knew you wanted to do it. Serial killers often demonstrate specific patterns that can be easily identified by police investigators. Also, uh, our good boy... Uh, very first podcast episode that I did. Jack the Ripper? Serial killer. Yeah, he's a serial killer too. Oh, I got it right. Yeah. I thought you were correcting me. I was like, what? Was it not Jack the Ripper? No, it was. He was okay. a serial killer. Yeah. I thought I messed up and I was like, no, I'm pretty sure it's the first episode. <laughs> no. I did the art for it. <laughs> he was a serial killer. Uh, what motivates serial killers <laughs> remains a mystery. However, their behavior often fits into specific subtypes. So according to a report issued by the FBI... Like Pokemon. There's no single identifiable cause or factor that leads to the development of a serial killer. Rather, there's a multitude of factors that contribute to their development. The most significant factor is a serial killer's personal decision in choosing to pursue their crimes. So in 1988, Ronald Holmes, a criminologist at the University of Louisville... Hey. Who specializes in the study of serial killers. I need to look up if this guy's still alive. I want to sit down and have a conversation with him. Um, identified four subtypes of serial killers. So there's the visionary, which is usually psychotic. The visionary is compelled to murder because they hear voices or see visions ordering them to kill certain kinds of people. So this is Son of Sam. This is the first one that comes to mind. Um, he heard voices that told him to kill. Uh, mission-oriented. Targets a specific group of people who they believe are unworthy to live and without whom the world would be a better place. Okay. We got hedonistic killers. They kill for the thrill of it because they enjoy the act of killing. And sometimes it's because they're sexually aroused during the act of murder. Okay. So that's more of a Richard Ramirez kind of thing. Um, and then power-oriented. Or I guess that would also be Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, power-oriented kills to exert ultimate control over their victims. These murderers are not psychotic, but they're obsessed with capturing and controlling their victims and forcing them to obey their every command. BTK. Bind, torture, kill. It's probably that guy. Mm. Probably a little bit of uh, Zodiac... And um Good movie. It's alright. I like that you right. I like that it doesn't have a conclusion. Yeah. Well the, the real story doesn't. Right, it's awesome. Yeah. Um female serial killers, while they do exist, are rare. They do exist. They do exist. Compared to their male counterparts. Sources suggest that female serial killers represented fewer than one in every six known serial murders in the United States between eighteen hundred and two thousand and four. Very big jump. Um, wow, that's actually more than I expected. You said one in six? One in... Or fewer than, but... One in every six known serial murders. So they knew it was a serial murder. One in each of those six was a serial... Was a female. That's way more than Between I 1800 and 2004. So, the, yeah, they're... Like, a serial murder is few and far between, but that's still a pretty good number considering. Yeah, um, I'm just thinking, like, percentage. Like, I would assume it was, like, 5%, not... Yeah. Not what? one in every six, yeah. Fifteen or whatever. Uh, sixty-four females 17. from a total of four hundred and sixteen known offenders. So of four hundred and sixteen known offenders, sixty-four were females. Yeah, so way more than I expected. Yeah, um, or that around fifteen percent of the U.S. serial killers have been women, with a collective number of victims between four hundred and twenty-seven and six hundred and twelve, like all all told mm. all together. So, because um, I've never heard of a female serial killer. Really? Yeah, I've never heard of one. Uh, Couldn't name you one. Monster. She was a serial killer? Yeah. I just thought she was crazy in Charlie's Theron. <laughs> I have no idea what who she was. What is her actual name? Hold on. It's, in the tip, it's on the tip of my tongue. I literally just was watched... Was that Monster's Ball? Wait, I... was that, is that the right person? <laughs> so Monster and Monster's Ball are two different things. So Monster, Monster Mon- is the Charlie's Theron movie, right? Yes. Monster's yeah. Ball is Halle Berry? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I was very young when those movies came out. I have no idea. <laughs> Eileen Warnos was what Monster was based off of with Charlie's Theron. I've never and, heard of her. Um, she... She, oh man, she was wild. Uh, I'll have to show you some kind of documentary stuff about her because she was wild. She, 
she was kind of who I thought about when I was talking about people running away. Because she said that she used to carry a pistol and she would proposition men for sex. And then they would threaten to choke her or they would start to choke her or kill her or like try to kill her. And she would shoot them. So it was self-defense. Her plea was like her, her, so she her was whole thing. She was a self-defense serial killer. So her whole thing was Genius. self-defense. Yeah. Except that a lot of the men that were run like, were running away when she shot them. Okay. Not as smart. So not as. I do like. So, so not super smart. She I'll, also thought that the government was listening in on her. Uh, the government? The government. <laughs> I have to get in there because you're going to say something funny and I got to get a sad thing out first. She thought the government was listening in on her um, in her cell like through her mirror and she used to like yell at her mirror i know you can hear me and stuff like that like she lost it like she mm. had a psychotic break uh i was just gonna say i like her resolve <laughs> and mm-hmm. i like that she tried to game the system i yeah. would legitimately be curious if you could become a self-defense serial killer i don't know i i mean they call them like black widows they consider Ooh. them they consider them black widows when that happens but the majority of time women serial killers go unnoticed because sorry men but they're smarter they kill with poison. Wow. Sorry. They kill with poison I mean, right. or something, you know, not as well known rather than with a gun mm. or a knife. Like most crimes of passion are committed with like <laughs> knives and guns, whereas women hold grudges and kill you slowly over time. So that's like, that's normally how that goes. I just want that voice clip recorded when I come <laughs> up dead one day. Women kill you slowly over and, time. And I start developing a cough over every the episodes <laughs> of these podcasts. <laughs> No, because I don't want to do all this. I don't want to have to set all this stuff up. So <laughs> Hold on. I like, that in the, I like that in this fictional world where I die, you continue this podcast. No, because I don't want to do all this. That was the point. That's what I'm saying. You're, I'm only being kept around to, so you can be a vehicle for this podcast. I'm not... Huh? What? <laughs> Nothing that I say here implicates me in any crimes. I, no one ever said that. I don't think that's how the law works. This is if, not a. If you're a cop, you have to tell me. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is where it all comes out, undercover. It's like that scene in. Uh, <laughs> what is that from? Oh, wait. What is the? Oh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> you, you just went. What is it? Oh, what is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the scene in Breaking Bad where Beaver's talking to the cop. I don't remember. Oh, it's he's better. talking to a cop. He's like, "If you're a cop, you have to tell me." He's like, "Dude, I'm not a cop." And then so he tries to sell him something and he oh, gets he's, arrested. He's, yeah. That's not real. Is that what he's, he's like? By the way, yeah. that's not a real rule. <laughs> like, yeah, we don't like, have to that's tell not you. a thing. It's great. <laughs> so, it's a great scene. So anyway, see you killers. Um, we're gonna talk about Edmund Kemper. He's the one that we watched the interview with. The giant. Okay, of a this guy's fucking creepy. The, yeah, this dude was wild. Not dropping an F bomb, um, but this guy is creepy. So an American serial killer and necrophile who murdered ten people, including his Ew! paternal grandparents and Ate that word. and his mother. Um, he is noted for his large size at six feet nine inches tall. Uh, that's two point zero six meters for our friends across the pond. Yeah, you always do that, and that's very considerate of you. But I would never do it. Well, that's the difference in, <laughs> between us, I guess. <laughs> I'm just lazy. And he was known for his high, or he is known. He's still alive, by the way. Uh, for his really, high, mm-hmm, yeah, I didn't know that. for his high IQ at one forty five. And you can kind of get that from how he speaks. Like Spoiler he's, alert. Yeah. I have no idea what IQ scores are. I don't either. You could tell me an IQ score and I'd be like, that's a score. I mean, like... like 145, you would have been like, oh, it's a low IQ score. I'm like, oh, yeah, 300. Oh, yeah, max. definitely. Yeah, mine's 400 at least. Yeah, you know, I don't, like, know, what, I don't yeah. know what IQ score is. I assume that in the hundreds up, it's good. Okay. Because I, I think I, I remember I remember reading that um, there, were a couple other, uh, there were a couple of other serial killers that had incredibly low IQs, like, in the 50s. Um, and so th- I remember reading... The, the decade? Yes. So that was an issue when it came to, like, trying to get them on stand at trials mm. uh, was because, like, they have a low IQ, but they obviously did these horrible things and show remorse for it, but they have a low IQ, so they can't put them to death. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's a mess. Anyway, Kimber was nicknamed the co-ed killer, as most of his victims were students at co-educational institutions. Oh, that was a hiccup. No, oh, yeah, that's um, not bad. <laughs> he was found sane and guilty at his trial in 1973, and he requested the death penalty for his crimes. Mm. He, he wanted to be put to death. Um, however, capital punishment was suspended in California at the time, and he instead received eight life sentences. So we were talking about multiple life sentences, yeah. so there we are. weird. Yeah. Uh, Since then, he's been incarcerated in the California Medical Facility, and he has waived his right to a parole hearing several times. Like, it's come up. Wild. Because he has said that he is, quote, happy in prison. And he's still alive. He's still there. He doesn't answer letters. Like, people will send him letters and stuff. He doesn't answer letters. He doesn't answer any of that stuff. It's almost commendable in a weird way. I mean, he... 
he has said, like, we watched that interview, like, he has said what he did was awful. He's like, I was a terrible person. My mother was a terrible person. Like, kind of blamed it all on his mom, to be fair. Yeah. Um, But, like, he, you know, he said that he, what he did was horrible. Like, he's aware of it. He pleaded guilty. He, you know. Yeah. Like, he wanted the death penalty. He thought he deserved it. I mean, he is a wild dude to listen to. Yeah. He, it's, it's more unnerving, I think, to hear someone so calmly and casually tell you the number, like, the, the method and the number of people they've killed mm. than to have somebody that, like, looks like you know charles manson actually i go ahead sorry well like him like talking about zippity boppity and all this stuff like all the stuff he would say and all of his, his yeah and all of his interviews and he looked like a like a cuckoo and he talked like a cuckoo and then like you're like okay i could totally see this guy murdering like 15 people even though technically he didn't kill anybody during the manson family murders but he still went to jail for it mm. even and because he like orchestrated it yeah but Edmund Kemper sits there, talks like we're talking right now, has a conversation with you, and is like, oh, yeah, and then I cut my mother's head off, and I tried to stick it in the uh, garbage disposal. And it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Like, you almost don't believe it. Yeah. Because it's so casual how they say it. And it's so much more unnerving to me to have somebody speak to you on a one-on-one -on -one level and know that they're educated yeah. and intellectual and they're speaking to you and telling you these horrible, heinous things they've done to another human being as if you're talking about, like, your favorite movie you've seen. When you played sports as a kid. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's creepy. I was going to say, I I am more creeped out by Charles Manson than him. Mm. Simply because, I don't know, I, I, get, I totally get your point of, like... He is creepy because he is the everyday man. Yeah. Like he can. Well, and what is it that like the one uh, people he gave a ride were like, well, you couldn't possibly be the killer. Thank yeah. God you picked us up. Yeah. It's like, um, have you heard about this? Oh, my gosh. And he's like, meanwhile, they don't realize they're sitting in the car with them. And I was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> but for some reason, he doesn't freak me out as much, I guess, because he's predictable in a way. Like he's okay. behave he's behaving in such a consistent manner. And of course, this is both after they've both can, been convicted. But mm -hmm. like Charles Manson, if I ever met a person like that, yeah, I would immediately be terrified. Right, just Which, because of like how it's, it's the old like double you know, double you don't kind of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, well, that's what that's really interesting though, because like that's from two different ideas. Like your only fear is someone acting acting out wild and crazy. Yeah. And my fear is a man who. Sure, like, yeah, who claims to be one thing totally makes and sense. is another thing. So that's kind of a, an interesting like societal, psychological yeah, aspect totally that you're sense. looking at. Because I totally see your thing. Like I could spot Charles Manson across the room and be like, not going anywhere near that. Right. But I would see Edmund Kemper and be like, oh, this is like a totally normal person I could sit down and have a beer with. Yeah. And then he just starts telling you about all these horrible things he's done in a super monotone, like normal voice. And it's like... This is, t that would be, and we were talking about predictability. Like, I could see Charles Manson and hear him go, I killed 15 people with a goat. And I'd be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you're, a you're, you're a psychopath. Saw it coming. Sure. Wouldn't have seen it. So so Makes I totally, yeah, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Sides. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying. That's a really interesting point, too, because that had never even occurred to me. Because mm. looking at somebody like that, I guess, I was just like, well, yeah, of course. Of course he's a murderer, you yeah. know. It's the ones that you don't expect that's scarier. Yeah. And it makes, I mean, given our roles in society, it, it yeah. makes some sense. And, and that's a really good point, though, because I've never considered that as being, mm. like, as far as, m like, my initial first fear is a man I don't know. Sure. So, like, that's an interesting societal thing that has never occurred before. Yeah. That's really scary, too. <laughs> uh, speaking of scary, uh, the second one we're going to talk about is Jeffrey Dahmer, because, of course it is. Because when I talk about serial killers, the first person I do any knowledge about or talk about at all is Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm trying to think of how many nights that we've somehow spent talking about Jeffrey Dahmer. We've watched interviews and stuff with it, too, because I'm just like, oh, get, find this one. Put this yeah. one on. It's, like, he's, I would say probably close to five that I've yeah. heard the Dahmer story now. Yeah, he's fascinating to me. Um, so he was also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal or the Milwaukee Monster. And he was an American serial killer and sex offender. A baseball player. <laughs> who committed the rape, murder, and dismemberment of 17 men and boys from 17, or from 1978 to 1991. Did you know he was... No, for 13 years, damn. 1991. Like, that's too close for comfort. Even though now it's in 2019. Like, that, that feels like... Oh, too was, recent. Yeah, too Got recent. It. Like, it feels like this, should, the length of this it, should be, like, 70 to 75. Like, it mm. should it should not be in a time where I were alive. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah, I should. It, I don't want to it have. It seems distant to me. I, yeah. I well, wasn't. yeah. That's fair. <laughs> it should. Like it feels weird to know that I was alive during a time that this was taking place. It was twenty eight years ago. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, many of his later <laughs> many of his later murders involved necrophilia, cannibalism, and the permanent preser- preservation of body parts, typically all or part of the skeleton. Although diagnosed with multiple personality disorders and a psychotic disorder, Dahmer was found to be legally sane at his trial. Convicted of 15 of the 16 murders he committed in Wisconsin, Dahmer was sentenced to 15 terms of life imprisonment on February 15, 1992. Yep. He was later sentenced to a 16th term of life imprisonment for an additional homicide committed in Ohio in 78. Oh, good. That'll show him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, on November 28, 1994, he was beaten to death in prison. Hey, he died before I lived. Yeah. Good riddance. Um, and I remember reading something about the, the man that killed him. He said he hit him, and Dahmer said, go ahead and kill me. I deserve it. Mm. He, that man wanted to die. I feel yeah. like he had, he had wanted to die since he got put in prison. Um, but it was just, it was his time. He, he was Killed just him with a barbell, time. right? I think so. Um, the story that I know was... Like the rod from a river. Something like that. Like, they were cleaning a bathroom, and the guy that did it said that somebody, like, poked him in the back, and he turned around, and the Dahmer and someone else was there, and, like, on cleaning duty or whatever, and they were, like, giggling to each other, like, ha ha, we did it, and he said he just, like, snapped, mm. and he just, like... He killed, he killed him. He said he believed that God wanted him to do it because, like, one of the security guards had stepped out of the room. Like, normally the security guard was in there, but it stepped out, and it was, like, he was hearing God say, like, kill him. But yeah. that's a really cool way to just also go down in history as the man who killed Jeffrey Dahmer. Sure. So, I mean, and uh, he was an African-American man, and Dahmer targeted mm. men of color. So, like, that was also maybe a little bit of, like... It would be incredibly hard to look at Jeffrey Dahmer and know that he's killed African American men and not want to sure. rip his head off and his done body. Unsightly things with mm-hmm. their bodies. Yeah, and like you know, what do they call that? Not disrespecting a corpse, but um I can't remember what it's called. Oh. You know, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, damn it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, mm, not dismantling, not defacing. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I do. It's not disrespecting a corpse. No. Defiling? No. It might be defiling. It's something along the lines of like, you... Uh, I can't remember. Obstructing a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's going to drive me crazy. It's something along the lines of that you've disrespected this person. Yeah. Um, Which is frustrating. I don't know how to look that up. I don't either. Um, And also... <laughs> me googling that is all like me googling all of these murders is already oh, you're on the list I'm already... <laughs> you're already way on the list i'm probably on the list because of how many times you've just done it in my house <laughs> like just on my isp <laughs> i'm sorry um yeah it's not is it desecrate it's not desecrating a corpse oh i think you're right i think it is desecrating a corpse. i think you said that though you i said, said defiling that. oh did you mm-hmm. is it, it's something it's something along those lines anyway i think it is desecrating it's, i think you got it it's something to do with being disrespectful to a to a human, and I'm gonna remember it as soon as the podcast episode. I think goes it's desecrating. Off. I think you got it. I'm gonna feel like an idiot anyway. Um, but yeah, he did he did really horrible things to people. Yeah. Um, and now the last one we're gonna talk about is Albert Fish, and Albert Fish <laughs> was ter- he's scary. You oh, need to, you need to Google a picture of him. He is a right, I'm doing it right now. spooky looking mother flipper. Um, he was an American serial killer. He was also known as the Gray Man. The Werewolf of Wisteria, The Brooklyn Vampire, and The Moon Maniac. The Werewolf of Wisteria sounds like a wrestling name. It does. Uh, and The Boogeyman. He's also known as Boogeyman. What was his name again? Albert Fish. Let's pause for dramatic effect as Dorm looks him uh, up. P or F? Uh, F. Like the animal. Not like the band. Not like the band. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. Oh, he's an old man. Mm, spooky. Doesn't he yeah. look, look kind of like a devil? To, like to me, I look at him and he's got like evil in his face. You know who he looks like? Who does he look like? Spoilers for uh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> oh no! He looks like Ares. Like Turn the, him let me see a picture the, you're looking the, at. The life version of Ares. Let, let me see this picture. What's the picture? You can't look at that man and tell me he one he's got fish eyes and number two it makes sense. It's the the he, the he ain't gonna kill you. You can't tell me he ain't gonna. He kill looks you. like um. This is a spooky man. Doctor Death. What was his actual name? Doctor Death. Yeah, the guy who, uh, like, euthanized people. What was that guy's name? I don't know. 
don't know what you're talking about. This is a real thing, I promise. All right, I'm going to talk about... You look that up. I'm going to talk about Albert Fish. Um, a child rapist and cannibal, he boasted that he had, quote, had children in every state. And at one time stated that the number was around 100. However, it's not known whether he was referring to rapes or cannibalization, nor is it known if the statement was truthful. He was a suspect in at least five murders during his lifetime, and he confessed to three murders that police were able to trace to a known homicide, and he confessed to stabbing at least two other people. He was put on trial for the kidnapping and murder of Grace Budd, the most horrible thing I've ever read, probably. Well, we're very close to it, if not the worst. He, okay. he wrote a letter to Grace's mother talking about how he killed her, he earned her trust, and then killed her, dismembered her, and ate her. Wrote a letter Jesus. to her mother and had it delivered and was like, here's how your daughter is dead. She's gone. Promise. Mm. And the only way, like his mom or her mom, Grace's mom, let her go with him because she believed they were going to a party. Mm. And so Grace's mom had to live the rest of her life Jesus. knowing that she let her daughter go with this man. And then he wrote a letter of all these terrible things that he did to her. Uh, Albert Heim was the guy. Yeah, he's an Austrian oh. doctor who euthanized people in World War II. Not, he didn't look like him though, so I don't know who I'm thinking of. Oh, I was thinking that you were thinking of like Dr. Moreau, like the island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, no. But that was more of like a... <laughs> Marlon Brando? That was like a fictional case, so yeah. I don't know. Um, but that was about like breeding. I know, that's why I was. That's why I didn't say it, because I was like, I don't think it's this. Played by Marlon Brando in the movie with, Vil- with Val Kilmer as the main character. Is that the one that he was in All in Shadow? That they put him all in shadow. Ron Brando, kind of, yeah. yeah they put, and he's in like white face in it. It's really he, weird. Because he just looks like a nightmare. Movie sucks. He looks like a nightmare. So they put him in shadow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, <laughs> Albert Fish was convicted and, elexi- and executed by electric chair. Um, now, here's something that's strange, and I don't know if this is true or not. But they said okay. that when he was electrocuted, like his he started to spark. Um, be- okay. Because he used to stick pins into his pelvis. Um because like that into was his pelvis yeah like kind of into his gooch and kind of like around into his hip bones like metal pins not pins like writing pins i thought of an ink pen i'm so sorry <laughs> yeah metal pins got it and he would stick them in there and they had it into his gooch just like yeah all over himself and they had an why ex- are you pushing your hips well because I'm, I'm telling you where you put them <laughs> that's not his gooch no i'm not poking up that <laughs> Um, and all of it in his pelvis and his hips and stuff. I'm not going to be like, let me just get around here. It's not a video format anymore. They That's couldn't, it, it wouldn't even pay off. Why are you pushing your hips at all? Because I'm tell, I tell stories with my hands. <laughs> so, so he had pins in his hips and he would also beat himself with a paddle that was full of nails. Did not know where that sentence was going. <laughs> and so they have an x-ray. If you, if you Google it, you can Google Al, Albert Fish x-ray. And it's just like his, the pelvis with like a ton of little metal pieces in it. So he used to stick them in there but pieces would break off like little pieces of metal would break off yeah and there's a saying i don't know if it actually happened but there's a story that like when he got electrocuted in the electric chair put to death that he um was like sparking because of it they had little pieces of metal in his body and he was sparking because of it Mm. (laughs) there was like i feel like there's i don't know about lethal injection but the electric chair was one of the most violent ways for a person to die yeah and Ted Bundy went that way. Like, some of the worst serial killers went that way. And it still doesn't feel like it's enough. You know? Mm, yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't... I don't we're what, not going to talk about would, capital punishment. What would be your ideal? Well... <laughs> Firing squad? I feel like... That's too quick. I feel like it was something that's... I'm kind of an eye for an eye type of person. Like, I feel like somebody mm. that goes... That ha- does that these Hammurabi's horrible code? things. Huh? Is that Hammurabi? Is that eye for an eye? I just... It's in the Bible, isn't it? That's all I know. Isn't it Hammurabi? Go ahead. I don't know. I just know it's like an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth or whatever. Yeah. Um. But but I kind of... I kind of want to see like somebody that kidnaps a kid and like get, keeps them like trapped in, in a basement for, you know, four years or whatever. Like they get treated the same way. Mm. It's kind of the same idea that I have for people that abuse animals. It's like if you chain them up outside without any food or water, like you should be chained up outside without mm. any food or water. But that's... It is Hammurabi, by the way. Oh, thank you. Babylonian that, guy. Yeah. But that's uh, not going to fly in polite society. So <laughs> it's not. This is why I could not be um, a police officer or anybody that is given a gun and trusted <laughs> to use it properly. <laughs> My mom and I have straight up said this. I'm like, because my, my mom and I were watching this show. We're going to derail again. Sorry. That's fine. Um, was, Nature of the show. It was some cop show. And the bad guy had like shot at them and like took off running. And my mom, I don't know, just, I, just out of nowhere, she went, I'd shoot him. 
And I was like, what? And she's like, I don't care. He shot at me and ran away. I'm going to shoot him. I said, you can't do that. And she's like, that's why I'm not a cop. And I was like, okay, <laughs> All right. fair enough, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, she, she very clearly was like, well, I'm not going to run. <laughs> she's like, I'll shoot him in the leg. I was like, that's, that's my mama. Thanks, mama. Kneecap him. <laughs> oh, bleh. Listen. Okay, you that's, don't get to gag at me. No, that's my, you know, that's my long pig. That's that's mine. It's a kneecap. I don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about... You talked about long pig for a freaking hour one time, so I'm going to talk about kneecaps. You don't want to talk about people skin. Anyway. <laughs> Still makes me mad. <laughs> I would never know. Anyway, so that's uh, the types of killings. Is that at all? That's the way the types of killings happen, and the uh, murders, and the people that do them. And that's a so that that you know what's sad though is that barely freaking hour and a half later, that barely really scratches the surface of all of the stuff involved. Because then you've also got like, you know, people like uh, Jonestown like coercing people into committing su- mass suicide basically, yeah. and then like. Um, just basically all kinds of different ways you can kill people, but like, <laughs> anyway, that's part. That's parts of it. That's what we talked about. Stop now before you bury yourself in a deeper hole. Oh, yeah. That was uh, that was something. <laughs> I mean, it was interesting. There's just so much. It's a lot of gray area that I don't like. Yeah, there's. I don't like how much is up in the air. And I'm sure that there's probably it's probably much more clear elsewhere. Like, like I don't yeah, feel like I like... explained a lot of it really well, and I got off track a few times. I don't feel like. I'm like you shouldn't listen to me and then go. I'm ready to be a lawyer. Like you should. <laughs> sure. you, you should, should go watch certainly. Legally Blonde and then yeah, say you should that. watch Legally Blonde, uh, one and two, and then you should definitely. Was it two? Yes, and then you should definitely be able that. and maybe a third coming out. Um, really? I don't know. Maybe there were three. And oh, there's then, a musical. And then you should definitely be able to take on the legal world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but don't don't mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention me by name. Oh, there were three. Wait. There were nope. three? Sorry. No, there were two, um, but there will be a third in 2020. Great. <laughs> and that, dear listener, is the worst murder of all. <laughs> <laughs> the murder of our brain cells. I'm tired. That wore me out. <laughs> when you said, I forget what it was I told you to slow down, but I literally couldn't process <laughs> as quickly as you were talking. Because it was like really finite legal legal stuff, and I was just like, "What? What? And, what did she just say? What is happening?" And even when you say it slow, it still doesn't make sense, you know? Like, yeah, but like at least it gave me time to realize I didn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> at least it gave me some time to go, "Wait, what?" Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm tired after that. I bet. I'm exhausted. I'm tired listening. <laughs> you're always tired after you listen to me talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Dorm, where can people find you? Uh, Twitch does, yeah, I forgot what I was supposed to say. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash the Torn Machines. Where, where, where can they find I'm just falling apart. Where can they find you? Twitch.tv slash Team Liddy. I said it nice and slow so y'all can find it. All right. Well, you don't have to make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't understand your mile a minute ass. Give me, well, I'm sorry. My butt had no, t- no give speech. Me, don't give me the lip. No speech involved. We're also on YouTube. Norm has Patreon. We got Snapchat, we got Discord, we got, uh, there's one I always forget, we got a store. There's two, I'm surprised you've forgotten. We've got, uh, Twitter. Yeah. We've got. <laughs> you, almost, you almost got it. I uh, did? What does it start with? <laughs> An I. Instagram. There it is. Um, well, I hardly ever use mine. Um, what else? MySpace. Yeah, here come the fake ones. AOL Instant Messenger. It's not even jokes a competition on, anymore. Jokes on you. I've made all of these, and oh. they're just they're just sitting there waiting for the day that I can You're pull them out. squatting on the dorm streams <laughs> MySpace. It's just like a picture of a butt. A Neopets account. Um, hey, don't joke about Neopets. That's not a joke, man. I play ne- <laughs> Did you play Neopets? Yeah, I play, I play Neopets. Neopets. Oh, man, we're going to have to talk about that someday. Do you remember the Neopets game? It was like a yes. cheese wheel. Yes. When you roll the cheese down the wheel. Yes. Nope. I remember. You roll the cheese wheel down the hill. I remember when they introduced that area. Oh, me too. Yeah. The area didn't like used to Fair exist. It was Meridil or yeah, sure. Med- Medril or something like that. I don't remember like names that. of anything. It, did, it didn't used to exist and then they brought it in. Yeah, I was there for that. I also remember when they took the fairy fountain in the fairyland and it looked different. Yeah, I know more than you do about Neopets. I'm flexing right yeah, now. Yeah, because I'm thinking of I'm timelines. What? 
Nothing. What? What is this face? Nothing. I'll talk I to played, you after the podcast. Okay, I played uh, like when I first. Okay, so here's how far back I go. Mm-hmm. When I first made my account on Neopets, you couldn't make your own screen name. They gave you <laughs> they gave you Neo uh-huh. and a number, and everybody just. I kind of remember that. Actually. Everybody just had Neo and a number. You couldn't come up with a name, and so for a really long time, and then you couldn't rename yourself. I don't think, or if you could, I didn't know how. So mine was mm. like Neo four seven five two one or whatever, like yeah. whatever it was, and. And all these other people started popping up with like really cool names, and I was like, "Oh man, I'm just like a neo name, and I don't, I'm not, I don't have a cool name." And uh, wild that they had that with neo Nazis or anything. <laughs> oh god, how upsetting, right? Yeah. Um, but I had a, I had a loop, which was like a little dog. I don't remember the names wolf. of anything. I had a cloud loop, and I loved it. And then somebody reported my account and said I was hacking, and they took my account away. I'm just trying to think of. Took that's funny. Account. It wasn't funny. I cried. My cloud loop <laughs> oh. is my favorite. Did you make a new one? Did you make a new account? No. I, the reason that made me cry is because <laughs> getting you, legitimately <laughs> upset. Is because you had to collect so much. I don't even remember how you did it. You had to collect so much stuff or money to buy a cloud paintbrush, and clouds were my oh, thing. Right. You, yeah, you painted them. I forgot about that. Yeah, I had a cloud. I, I had a cloud bedspread. I had oh cloud curtains. You I loved. Dork. I love. I loved clouds. I might still have my cloud bedspread now at my place where I am now. Actually, from when I was still a child, it's just really comfortable, and I had it. Oh, this is in real life. (laughs) (laughs) I thought all of this was in the game. In real life. I was like, I don't remember a bedroom. No, in real life. But you get rooms now. They have houses. Neo homes. (laughs) They have Neo homes now. I was so... No, in real Lost. life, Storm, that's why Because you're like, I might still have it. And I was like, you still play Neopets? You just look, okay, I was wondering why you just looked at me like my head fell off. <laughs> you just stared at me like, are you serious? How do you have time to do that? I anyway, mean, so, yeah. in real life, uh-huh. I have cloud stuff. You're like uh, Andy from Toy Story. Huh? He had the cloud wallpaper. I didn't remember that at oh, all. Oh, really? I was like, I don't write my name on the bottom of my cowboy's <laughs> feet. Um, anyways, so... I saved up a bunch of money and time and effort and blah, blah, blah. And I got a cloud paintbrush and I was so excited. And I painted my loop and it was cloud loop and it was my favorite, most favorite animal ever. And then like maybe like two months later, people were like, you can't be the level that you are. Oh, so what happened was I was taking gold from, you're not supposed to do this. <laughs> so you were cheating. Well, no, not necessarily because I was moving everything from my Neo account that I couldn't change the name on it. I was moving all of those items to my new account that I had made my name, which was, I don't know what it was. It was but something. he had a Neo Swiss bank account. It was something... <laughs> It was something with you were offshore neo petting. <laughs> it was something with Lydia in the name, I'm sure. But I guess when that, like, they saw that I was like a level, a low level, and all of a sudden I've got all of these items, and I've got this paintbrush. Yeah. I've got this. Looks suspicious. It looks suspicious, and someone reported me for cheating or <laughs> hacking or whatever, and they banned my awesome. account, and I couldn't get it back. And it, that's okay, really funny. Do you want to know the saddest part? As if this wasn't sad enough. I was going to say, we've not reached the saddest part. So when I used to make accounts on stuff when I was younger, Uh I wouldn't put my real, like, I wouldn't put my real name, obviously, or my real birth date. God, you've always been paranoid. Yeah. Well, so because you, like, I didn't want to put my real anything on there. Put my whole ass everything. Yeah, I didn't want to put my everything on there. So what are you doing? I'm sorry, I'm just holding the mic. Why are you doing this? For all your listeners. Um, So I didn't put anything real on there. So when you try to get it back, you have to put... Your oh, birthday, and, you lied about and I lied when I signed up, oh, and I couldn't funny. couldn't remember what it was. So in the little description box, I was like, "This isn't. I don't ever use my real birthday for anything." <laughs> and so it backfired. And so my attempt to be the most private person I could means that I will never That's again awesome. have my wonderful cloud loop. I will never have it again. Uh, what a sad day. I'm Aww. trying to think if I was too like, what year was this? Do you know? I honestly don't remember. I was it like 2002, 2003, 2004, something like that? It was in the early 2000s, but okay. I thought it was like late 90s even. Maybe. I don't remember when it came out, but I remember like it now it's like a whole thing. I think Is it's it still, still a thing? I think it's still going strong, yeah. I bet there's a mobile version probably. I, I, there was about to be, I think. I think there's, yeah. <laughs> we're on the precipice? Yeah. We're, the precipets? <laughs> oh, stop it. Yeah. It's a neo-revolution. Uh, I'm going to yorts. Um, 1999. It launched in 99. Okay, so right before the millennium. Yeah, right before the millennium. Um, and, uh, it's still going. You know what? I normally would cut this, um, (laughs) 
But maybe people need to pick me up after the murder talk, so I'm going to leave it in. Yeah. I'm going to leave it in. So this is, I'm showing Dorm now a screenshot of what it looked like forever ago. Yeah, oh, that's the way I remember the site. What does it look like now? Um, I don't even know if, ugh, I've probably been banned. I remember for, all those banner ads. I've been banned Just for banner life. banner ads everywhere. I've been banned for life probably now. It won't even, every everywhere I go. <laughs> Neopets knows you're. Oh, what? They have a game. It says out now, Goal Catchers. Get it on Apple Store and Google Play. What's this? Hey, it's an app. It's, they've got apps now. Like, should we just get rid back in the Neopets? Oh my god, can we stream Neopets? Is that a thing? I'm sure you can. Do people do? Oh, okay. Well, it's not very different. Let me see. Oh, hey, yeah, this still looks like the Neopets yeah, site. Yeah, it still looks like Neopets. <laughs> We're just looking oh at the god. Neopets site. What if I could find my my thing? Did you have a username you used before Liddy? Or has Liddy always kind of been it's, part of it? It's always been it. It's that's always been my thing. That's um, that's impressive. Yeah, it's that's, mine's changed several times. It, yeah, it's that's always been my my thing. I think. Did I tell you what my first one was? No. Well, I can't. I can't tell you what my first one was because it's based around my real name. Right. But my second one uh, was royalty. You did tell me this because because of NBA Street Volume Three. Because yeah, you, <laughs> you get a nickname as your character, and mine was royalty. That's and very good. Made me laugh, so I, I used it. That is very good. Uh, and my old uh, password was rock and sock. <laughs> Rock because of uh Dwayne Johnson and Mick Foley's tag team. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Rock and Sock connection. All right, so It's a great password. You don't have to read this out loud, but I feel like I might have found my old account. Oh my god. Because and this is why I think I did. Uh -huh. Because that's still a default. That's a default. That's funny. Icon? Wow. That would be a default icon like Yeah, that makes sense. And that's way back when. So that I'm just very impressed that Liddy has been part of your thing for so long. Yeah, and but it's changed you, several times. But you times. have to sign up to see it. Ah, so beans. Yeah, and I can't log in because I don't remember what it was. You know what? You should reach out. Send him an email. Send Neopets an email. This is going to be an ongoing thread. We're going to get in touch with Neopets and I, see if we can get your account back. I don't know if I can though. Why not? They're I, probably I just no, chilling. I have. <laughs> We're not doing much, right? Just hanging out, wait, yeah. waiting for my call. Yeah. Just been waiting all this time. Look at her. When's Liddy going to call So, like, us hey, back? I was an idiot kid. I got a stream now. I could pump this out. <laughs> I don't think that I, I would bring, stream. I could bring eyes to your... <laughs> I don't think that I would stream Neopets just because it's, like, Flash games. And I would get bored as a child. So, I can oh, imagine... I never got bored. I loved it. Did you do battles? Yeah. <gasps> you did the battles? I did one battle once and when it started hurting my animal, I was like, how do I leave? Oh, no. I was like, Get me I had a very Pokemon approach of it. Of really? Like, these are my little gladiators and I'm just going to make <gasps> a fight. I love I had, that. I had a bunch of them. I had like so many Neopets. Uh, they were all like the same level. Oh, man. You have to enter your e email address. That's definitely gone by now. I know what my uh, old ad uh, address was. I know what some of my old ones were, but they don't exist anymore. Because it was on Excite.com. Ooh, Hotmail. Right here. Mm. Well, Hotmail's now Gmail stuff. Mm, no, these didn't. I didn't like bring these over. Like these were mm, still gotcha. these were still at Hotmail names because sometimes when I try to update my apps that I've had on my phone since the dawn of time, yeah. it'll be like enter this password for this email account, and I'm like, I no, I, don't, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I literally can't. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm gonna try to find. I'm gonna try to find my account. Liddy, until next time. <laughs> Be careful where you click. What was the delay? Are you trying to give me some free I audio? I needed to lean forward. Oh, gotcha. I never edit anything, by the way. Be careful where you click. I will say one thing that's nice about...